So now to put this all into context, I'm going to give you a brief summary of everything that I've talked about this year. In the first week, I talked about why it is that you can't stop eating. I gave you a myriad different reasons why it is so hard for us to stop ourselves from eating, particularly once we've started. This is really important as a foundational step because it lets you know that this is not just a matter of willpower. It's not just a matter of finding discipline to stop yourself from eating. And so in the second week, I started talking about how your eating might be emotional, how there might be something psychological behind it, or some physical or emotional or both discomfort. I asked you a few questions which started to help you identify what the emotion might be for you. This is important so that you start to understand what you're dealing with here. Recovery from comfort eating starts with knowing what's going on for you. And as you can see, it's a little bit complicated. In the third week, I talked about your self-critic as the number one reason that people comfort eat. I have not met a comfort eater yet who does not put themselves down quite badly. I explained how this makes you want to eat more. So the vicious cycle of giving yourself a hard time for not being able to stop eating, hopefully I've exploded that as a bit of an unhelpful way to think. <laughs> At this time, I gave you a little bit of an insight into how your self-worth can be influenced in your history and how it can show up in daily life. And then as we started to get deeper into this, I talked about your inner child as the part of you that responds to this critic. I explained that the language of the inner child is feeling and expression. Then I started to explain things to do with your nervous system and your brain and neuroscience. I explained firstly what triggering actually is. And I gave you a list of emotional triggers, the emotions that you might experience in the present that might trigger you into feeling unsafe or to recycle something unsafe from your past. I explained a little bit about the physiology of triggering and I gave you nine ways or nine steps that you can start to have a good conversation with your inner child and start to notice it. This ties in beautifully with talking about the window of tolerance and how you go in and out of a stress state. So then I gave you lots of different ways to try and help you regulate and come back into a window of tolerance to a more regulated state to your parasympathetic nervous system response. I think of these as branches of a tree. One branch is self-regulation. One branch is your self-critic and how you talk to yourself. One branch is how you jump out of your window of tolerance. Another branch is the emotion that might trigger you out. Another branch is your past and your history and what might be triggered from your past. Another branch is your self-worth. The structure of the podcasts and the videos that I've been producing since January are the structure of my program. Obviously, I go into much more detail with people in the program, but you have the basic structure here. These are the things that you can be continuing to develop. And the more you do that, the more it will help with your comfort eating recovery. So I'm going to take a little break now so that I can upload some of my programs. I have a lot of admin to do, unfortunately. <laughs> But one of the things that I see over and over again that people are most afraid of is the feelings they'd be left with if they stopped comfort eating. So that's what I'll be talking about next time I come back. So please stay tuned and look at all my other podcasts, all my videos. You've got plenty to get through and I'll be back in a few weeks. Thank you so much for following. If you got value from this, please share it or let someone else know so that they can follow too. This has been Underground Confidence with Shelley Treacher. Thank you so much. I'll see you again soon.